channels out a little bit. Okay, um, what are our channels saying? Well, um, our channels are saying, uh, if we look at the, um, let's look at them individually first, the 18-month channel, of course, um, is, is indicating that, that this cycle is due to trough, although uh, the channel itself is troughing a little bit later towards the end of February. But now what happens when a cycle troughs? Well, um, either, the, um, either the channel itself experiences a trough, as you can see it expect, is expected to happen over here, or in fact, as happened over here, all that happens is that price approaches the channel. Um, you can see it over here. Here, here's the 18-month channel. Here's the um, here's the 18-month trough, as I, as I pointed out. Try not to draw over everything. Um, and as you can see here, the, the channel itself didn't really experience um, a trough, but price approached the edge of the channel and then bounced away. When price approaches the edge and then bounces away, that is um, action that is expected towards the end of the um, cycle. So what we can say is that because we're expecting uh, this um, cycle towards the end of December, what information do we glean from here? Well, we expect price to approach. It might not touch, but we expect it to approach this channel that has been plotted. Now, remember, this channel projection is not accurate and should not be used as gospel truth. Um, but it, it, the, cha the channel is moving down, and um, so we're expecting price to come um, somewhere over here for December of um, uh, towards the end of December. We expect pro price to approach the channel, and that is why I um, have been saying since. Um, uh, since last year, but more recently since March this year. Since March this year, um, which is sort of round about here on this chart, I've been publishing in our ST Outlooks the fact that I believe that by the end of the year, uh, the S&P 500 is going to fall below the 10,000, uh, not 10,000, the 1,000 mark. Here is the 1,000 mark, and you can see why, because I expect price to come towards this channel. Okay, it's one of the reasons. All right, so that's the um, that's the. 80-day channel, and um, then if you if you plot the other channel, uh, not uh, the 18-month channel, if you plot the shorter channels, um, then you uh, can get even more information um, and possibly better, more accurate information. I mentioned that when um, price approaches a channel, that's an indication of a trough, and the same thing is true for when a channel approaches a channel. So what's the 40-week channel doing over here? Uh, I, I'll just draw a circle around it. It's pretty clear. The 40-week channel over here is approaching the 18-month channel, and it approaches it at its closest point, uh, somewhere about here, which is sort of in November. So it's saying that um, um, a 40-week trough, which of course will also be the synchronous trough with the 18-month trough, so it's the same trough we're talking about, is now expected uh, sometime in November. Okay. Uh, so our phasing analysis tells us here, sometime it's in December, our 18-month um, uh, channel tells us sometime here in February, our 40-week uh, channel tells us sometime here in early November, and at what level will we expect price to approach this channel? It might not touch it, but it will approach it. So again, we expect that price to happen somewhere here um, below um, 1,000. In fact, dare I say, as low as about... Um, uh, 920 or something like that. It looks looks like something like that on the chart. Um, so let's extend the reasoning. I, I won't do it in such detail, but let's extend the reasoning with each one of these um, each one of these uh, channels, and you'll see the 20 the 20 um, week uh, channel provides us with exactly the same amount of information. I hope this is getting uh, second hand for you now. Um, so um, here you can see the 20 week channel is in fact touching that 40 week channel um, right over here um, in December, right about the time where the 18 month cycle is due. Um, and where will price go to? It will approach the channel. It might not touch it, so it will approach it. It will definitely end up in the sort of um, bottom, um, bottom third of that channel. So, um, again, we're looking at a level somewhere over here, which is probably about 930, 940. So that's what the nesting of the channel tells us, uh, nesting of the channels. Let's uh, take a quick look at the triads and, and see, what, see what they tell us um, for the same thing. Uh, let's plot the triads. Okay, the 18-month triad I, um, I did already uh, speak about. Um, 
here are the uh, with triads. Remember, you look at the projected intersections. There's one. There's the other. You go from the peak to the midpoint of the intersections, and um, and beyond. So that 18-month projection is um, to just above 1,000, um, probably. Uh, but remember I told you that um, these lines project upwards and therefore this is always conservative. The refined projections are always conservative. So in fact we always expect this projection to go a bit further. So if that projection was about um, 1025 or, no sorry, 1050, we expect it to go a bit further, in other words, below 1000, uh, in my opinion. Okay, um, let's take a look at the next triad down. We're nearly finished with this process. Um, the 40-week triad. 40-week triad is giving us a much better cluster. Look at that. It's looking really nice. Um, and uh, even though those lines are projected, um, it, it might even begin to be an, an, an accurate cluster. There it is. And uh, there's the peak. Let's draw that there. And let's draw it equal distance. That's about here. So that cluster is, um, is saying that, that possibly that target has already been reached. So in other words, 11,100, and um, uh, but we know that in terms of time, um, we're still expecting a bit, of, a bit more time to play because we're only expecting that uh, trough to occur over here. We're not expecting it to occur over here. Um, so uh, what does that mean? Well, um, again, I'll repeat it. Uh, refined FLD projections are conservative. So that means that this projected cluster is very possibly conservative and that, in fact, um, it's going to uh, project further down um, in the future. And um, let's have a look at our 20-week uh, uh, triad, because our triad provide us with the information about the approaching um, the trough. And, um, and so what does that tell us? That's an interesting little uh, point. Here, um, here is a cluster there, and so it was saying um, a projection from there to there to over here for the 20-week trough. However, as you can see, that projection was actually projecting to this trough here. So you can see the projection was accurate in terms of price level. It wasn't very accurate in terms of time, and that's very true for FLD projections and for refined FLD projections. Their projections in terms of time but their projections in terms of price are often very accurate. Um, and uh, then there is another cluster. Let me just um, let me just clear that and show you the other cluster that is beginning to form, uh, but it's not well enough formed yet. And um, that is a cluster over here. And uh, so that is projecting up to a peak for the current um, for the current 20-week uh, cycle. Uh, um, to over here, but that's a very premature. Uh, it's a very premature cluster, and um, and it's not uh, it's not one that I would rely upon at all. Okay, I hope I hope that uh, I hope that explains uh, the use of uh, using channels and using um, a triad line or half span, full span moving averages to project price troughs and as peaks. Um, bear in mind, Sentient Trader does all of this uh, um, automatically for you. Um, uh, or you can uh, play around with it and look at it yourself. Um, MJ has said, in technical analysis, a bare flag is set up. Uh, you project the bottom by taking the distance at to the top to the beginning of the flag, yes, and subtract that from the um, end of the flag, which in the AP is about 1050, I think. If, I'm, if, my, if my standard technical analysis is not too rusty, that what MJ is, is saying is that um, is that this here is a bare flag? Is that right? It looks like a, it looks like a flag with a flagpole. There's the flagpole, and it's flying happily in the wind. And uh, your projection you take from the um, from the bottom to the top, and then you project it somewhere there, 
and then you project from the uh, start before the flag, and you project downwards, and you get a projection. My technical, okay, my technical analysis is a little rusty, but um, it's something like that. Uh, so as MJ points out, uh, the, the whole uh, meeting between Cytec analysis and Sentient Trader and classical technical analysis is a fascinating subject all on its own. Um, so as MJ points out, um, uh, Somewhere here, potentially, there is a bear flag that's been set up. I'm not sure I explained it properly. Um, you should never rely on me for classical technical analysis. Um, rely on me for cycles, but not for classical technical analysis. So, um, so I hope that, uh, you know, I really hope that um, answers your questions about um, profit matching stock transaction timing, because I know that a lot of our users have read that book and love that book, and a lot of people are considering using Sentient Trader have read that book. And everything they read about Sentient Trader um, doesn't seem to refer to the Profit Magic book. Um, Profit Magic book is still alive and well in Sentient Trader. The ideas are continued. Uh, they are, I, I believe, in enhanced and improved. And um, and uh, you saw them today in uh, in our uh, in our trader chat. So. Um, uh, thank you again. Uh, I, th I think that's a natural um, ending point for our trader chat. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for uh, for joining us on today's trader chat. Um, I do hope you're enjoying the trader chats and finding them valuable and worthwhile. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next week. And uh, again, I'm I'm going to I'm going to let things keep running. Um, uh, if there are still more questions. And I'm happy to answer what other questions I can. Um, and thank you, everybody. And uh, I'll see you see you next week.